Hey everybody, it's Friday. It's time for Facebook Live. I hope that you've had a great week. It has been um, a great week here. Lots of fun going on in my studio. You could probably see some new things in the back. This was uh, design week, which was really fun for me. I uh, was working ahead this week, trying to get some things designed for November. And um, believe it or not, I got a ton done. You know, sometimes creativity, you guys, like wanes, ebbs and flows for me. And sometimes I can't get things um, designed in the time that I need to. But this week I got almost everything done. So um, be on the lookout. I'm trying to share this over, make sure that I'm putting it in the right place. Um, so be on the lookout for November classes coming up towards the end of October. These will be add-on classes for the retreat. These will be also to-go classes for November. Okay, so you guys, a little bit of a warning. Um, yesterday here, I always talk about the weather, you guys. I'm a super big weather nerd, so sorry. <laughs> but yesterday it was 96 here, okay? Today, with the wind chill, it's in the 40s. Look, I'm wearing long sleeves for the first time. I'm super excited. Um, however, the wind is gusting big time in the 30s, 30 miles an hour, and our electricity has done this a little bit. Um, we don't typically lose power unless it's like a big storm and lightning strikes, but for some reason today, I think with the wind. So just a fair warning. Hopefully we don't lose power. I don't know what happens to Facebook Live. If we lose power, does the internet switch from my home internet to my phone internet? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. So be patient and, and it may be kind of wonky, um, but remember after I upload, it'll all be clear. So anyway, hello everybody. It's so good to see you. Um, I'm excited about today. Um, let's jump in. Uh, let's see, what do I want to do first? You know what? Um, let's talk about the Everything is Rosy kit. If you remember in May, uh, Stampin' Up! released a, they call it a product medley, and it's an all-inclusive open-ended kit. It's the best way to describe it. It includes a six pack of, I mean, a pack of six by six paper, a stamp set, dies, um, two bowls of ribbon, some die cut, some embellishment, some shiver paint. It's a ton of stuff. So in May, I designed a class um, for it. I have a PDF for it. Well, it was only in May, right? And then it went away. Well, guess what? They brought it back and now it's on the clearance rack um, and it's about $20 less than it was. So if you loved Everything is Rosy, I dug out two of my samples, here they are. I made six projects with this beautiful, beautiful medley, and these are the only two I can find. So, hopefully this will spur your memory. Go over and check it out. It's like um, 60 something dollars for all of that, which is a great value. I'm also going to, if you buy it now, it's on the clearance rack, I'm gonna send you the PDF for free. So you'll have six tutorials to go with it, okay? So check it out. Also a great Christmas gift. You know, it's October, so now we can really start thinking about Christmas gifts. Um, you can send your husband the link, you can send your mom the link, you can send your sister the link, whoever shops for you for Christmas, let them know about that Everything is Rosy kit. Um, it can also be added to a starter kit. If you wanna buy that starter kit for, for $99, you get $125 worth of product. So you can always, anything that, that is um, for sale, either clearance rack, specials, whatever can be added to the starter kit, including pre-orders, which we have a new paper trimmer coming and a new Christmas suite um, that we'll talk about more as we get closer to November. Um, but right now, the only way you can get it is in the starter kit. Had to throw that in. Okay, so classes to go. This is the, feels like some things are missing. These, this is the Gather Together class to go. There are six projects. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's raining. It's very exciting here for the rain. And by the way, my dogs have lost their minds today. They are barking at everything. The wind is blowing. They're old men. These two schnauzers, super old men, and they are disturbed by the wind blowing. So it's gonna be crazy today. They're gonna bark. 
I'm just going to tell you that right now. They're going to bark. Okay, so anyway, gather together. Here's one of the projects. My favorite, a boozy chocolate treat. Who wouldn't love to give that to their friends? Um, this is just one in the class to go kit. Um, there's also three cards, of course, lots of layers, beautiful, a caddy, a candy caddy, and a really cool box that opens at an angle. It has an angled um, lid. So that's all in the class to go. The deadline for this class is next Friday. Friday, okay? Hi, Betty. It's good to see you. Um, so if you are interested in this class, there's, of course, four options with the bundle, without the bundle, PDF only, and then make and takes for my team. So um, you can find this on today's PDF at the bottom of my blog, and I'll also link it in the description of the video, okay? Okay. Class number two is the Elfie, hashtag Elfie. He's so cute. This is a stamp a stack, which means you're gonna stamp a stack of cards. This is gonna give you 10 cards for Christmas. Um, and it features the Elfie class, hashtag Elfie right here. Everybody loves this set. Comes with a 30 minute video. Um, Shelly, you're in San Antonio too. Ooh, Shelly, are you enjoying the weather? It's so good, it's so awesome. Um, so this class deadline is October 25th. So you still have time, uh, quite a bit of time on this one. It includes, um, paper, I can't even remember now. What does it include? Ribbon, this bolt of ribbon, um, and you can add on blends at a discount, okay? All right, that too is linked on my blog. You can find it on today's PDF. Speaking of today's PDF, if you haven't joined me for Facebook Friday before, I always type up this very teachery PDF. I used to be a teacher. So you can tell. Um, so everything that we do today is going to be here. All the things that you need, the measurements, as well as the things that I've just mentioned right here. You can find details. The links right there will take you to the registration page. Okay. Okay. How about some prizes? Last week... Um, I picked two people just today from last week's video, and um, <laughs> Shelly says, sweater weather and not a hair dryer to the face. You guys, those of us that live in South Texas, you know, people up north, you like hot weather, we get it, but when you have a hair dryer blowing in your face five months of, of the year, it's awful. Um, there's no break. So when we get some cool weather, we get very excited. And I know those of you up north who have super cold weather, you're like ridiculous. That's like spring, whatever. But it's exciting for us South Texas girls. Okay, so winner is from last week. These two ladies shared the video on Facebook. Janice Van, Van Halleny. Janice, I'm sorry if I butchered it. And Gail Boyd. They are winning a host set with those uh, copper stars. I do not believe that I have either of your mailing addresses, so please email me, okay? Connie likes the cool weather too. Yeah, I went for my morning walk run this morning and it was tough. That wind was tough. Wind is wind is hard, wind is hard. Um, where did I, okay, so this week, prizes. I have something kind of different this week. How about some purple posy? I've got a purple posy ink pad with purple posy blends. Um, I've got two of them to give away, so if you would like a Purple Posy stamp pad and Purple Posy blends, just share the video on Facebook. You'll be entered to win, okay? Make sure you do that by next week. Now, next week, you guys, um, I think I've mentioned probably a hundred times that my parents are moving to San Antonio, to Holotus, where I live, um, next week. Next week. Uh, they will be... Pulling into town on Wednesday, they close on their house on Friday. Um, as of right now, my Facebook Friday is gonna stay the same time. However, I am dedicating all of next weekend to help them moving in, helping them get settled. So be on the lookout, next week's time, day may change. I don't know that for sure, but just mm, keep an eye, okay? We will be live, but it may not be on Friday. We're very excited about it. Um, okay, so last announcement is the All-Star Tutorial Bundle. Um, if you spend $50 with me in October, I'm going to send you this giant 70-something page PDF that has 12 projects from 12 amazing demonstrators. Here's my project this month very pretty. It would make a great host gift if you're going to somebody's house for Thanksgiving. Um, and then of course there's 11 others in there. You get it for free when you spend $50 with me um, at stampinup.com or you can buy it in the PDF store for $15. 
Deborah says it finally rained in Kentucky after 40 days. Deborah, I feel for you. We have had zero rain as well. Um, it is raining a little bit today, just kind of that, you know, like drizzly for like five minutes. But man, isn't it nice when it finally rains? Oh, um, good for you. We need some more. So when you're done with it, send it to us, okay? So Facebook Friday, I always pick a product. It's not always a stamp set. Um, will my mom be attending the monthly meeting? Connie, I don't know. Um, she's not a demonstrator yet. Maybe she will. I bet she would like to do that. That's a great idea. I will invite her, Connie. She's just, her house is just like a mile away. The house that they built is not very far from us. So that would be, that would be fun. I'll have to ask her if she'd like to come. Um, so Facebook Friday this week is birds of a feather. Hopefully you saw, oh, and I meant to pull it out. What did I do with it? I did a project on Wednesday and now it's like totally disappeared. I have no idea where it is, but I made a little tiny box with the Valentine rooster or chicken, guys. Is he a chicken or a rooster? I cannot decide. I think it's a chicken, right? I don't know. But anyway, I made a cute little tiny box, okay? Um, so that's a bonus video tutorial this week. It's just back one day on my blog, um, so you can check that out. So then today we're gonna do the turkey, the duck and the bird, the Christmas bird. Um, if you have the stamp set or you want this stamp set and you want these projects today for free, you can put in an order, a $35 minimum order by Monday at midnight, and I will send them to you next week. There's my mom. Hi, mom. You're, they're asking if you're going to come to our team meeting. You are invited to our Sweet Stampede team meeting next Monday. Um, this is what they look like. I cut and pack and prep everything for you and I send them in the mail the Wednesday after Facebook Live. So this week's projects I will cut on Tuesday and mail next Wednesday. So your order has to be in by um, Monday at midnight, okay? Um, and there, see, I add the ribbon, everything that you need in there. It looks like that. Okay, so I'm kind of all over the place today. I think the weather's making me crazy. Hopefully that made sense. If you'd like today's projects for free, place a $35 minimum order by Monday at midnight. There you go. Connie, you think it's a chicken? What do you guys think, chicken or rooster? I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I can't decide. And when I made my video, I kind of felt dumb because <laughs> I didn't know if it was a chicken or a rooster. Okay, close your eyes. I'm switching the camera over. Um, what makes a rooster a rooster? He has a big comb on the top of his head, doesn't he? Do chickens have that too? I need to ask my friend Jackie. She has chickens. She would probably know. I know she doesn't have a rooster, but maybe she would know the difference. Okay, hold on just a second. I'm trying to adjust this camera. Kathy says a chicken. Ooh, mom, I can have the team meeting at your house. Sweet. That will mean I don't have to clean up. All right, Connie, you heard her. She said we could go to her house. I know, maybe not this coming Monday, but maybe the next time. <laughs> okay, so here's our three projects. I think what we will do is, I have the turkey stuff here, so we'll start with the turkey project first, okay? All right, let me just clean off some of this that was holding my camera, give myself a little bit of room, and, oh, I think we're ready. The wind, I'm so distracted by the weather, you guys, I apologize. I come from a long line of weather nerds, right, Mom? We love the weather. We love to talk about the weather. We love to watch the Weather Channel. It's in my jeans. Okay, so we're going to make this super cute little turkey treat. Inside of him are just these dove, they're called dove pumpkins. That's what they're called. Um, I just use them because I think the color matches really great. And you could get quite a, you could make quite a few of these. This is what it looks like. Um, I just got them at the grocery store, you guys. But uh, if you can't find them at your grocery store and you want to get them, um, I did link it on Amazon. So at least you can see what it looks like. Okay, so let's make our little turkey first, okay? Um, suddenly it's super warm in here and I don't know why. It's because I am talking and not sitting and coloring like I was doing earlier. I had my, I told my mom earlier that I had turned on this space heater for the first time this year. I have a little space heater under my desk and it was <laughs> burning all the dust off of it because it hasn't been run since probably February. 
And I said, it's my favorite day of the year. Hi, Vicki. Okay, so here's our turkey. And you'll notice, I'm gonna stamp him on crumb cake, not whisper white. I These require a lot of coloring. Um, so I did some things a little bit different to kind of minimize that coloring, especially if you needed to make a bunch of these. Maybe you're gonna put them on your Thanksgiving table at each spot. Um, you might need, I don't know, like eight or 10. Um, so I minimized a little bit of the coloring and I'm gonna show you how I did that. Basically, we just stamped it on um, colored cardstock. If you have not stamped on colored cardstock before and then used your blends, it's really fun. It's really kind of interesting and it it makes it get, it gives it more of a, uh, I don't know, like a well, vintage, I don't know, is that the word vintage-y kind of a rustic look? So it's fun. Okay, let's start with um, Crush Curry. No, I always call it Crush Curry. It's Mango Melody, and it looks very similar to Crush Curry. Mango Melody stamp and Blend. And I'm gonna do the outside of his um, feathers like this. Don't forget that one over there. Um, I did pre-record these for you guys, so there will, there will be clean recordings if you wanna come back and um, make the projects later. You don't have to go through all the silliness of Facebook Live. I know sometimes when you're trying to figure out how to make a project and you're watching a recording of a Facebook Live, all the chit chat can be kind of annoying. So that's why I do those clean recordings. And this morning when I recorded that one, let's see why we have this mango out, let's do his beak too. Um, while I was doing the clean recording, I forgot that feather right there. So don't forget that one. And then we'll do the inside with dark pumpkin pie. I don't think that I've ever had a, a cute turkey stamp like this. Usually the Thanksgiving stamps are kind of serious. They're kind of, you know, more, uh, not as cutesy as this. I like cutesy stamps. Do you guys like cutesy stamps? I like them when they're cutesy. Okay, now let's see, let's do his waddle. At least that's what I think it's called. When I taught kindergarten, we were, we always had a week full of turkeys and that's what we called it, the waddle. I'm bringing the Mingo Melody back out to do the little buckle on his hat. Now, I'm gonna use light uh, basic black for his, um, for his hat. No promises, mom. Uh, she's saying, are we gonna make these, or are you gonna make these for our Thanksgiving? And I, no promises. I don't know. I'll have three of them made by the time this one is done. So maybe. Okay, so basic black light. Be very careful with your basic black blends because they are very, very potent. They're dark. Um, you, I, I, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't think I, I rarely use my dark basic black because it is so dark. All right, the bottom of the pie, that is soft suede dark. Now for the pie crust, I was like, whoa, what could I use? A pie crust is kind of a pinkish, tannish color, um, and the paper's already tan. So I got my petal pink, and I think it turned out perfect, don't you? That's a pretty good color for that. Now, I wanted his apron to be white, and we don't have a white Stampin' Blend, so I pulled out our white uh, colored pencil or watercolored pencil, and I'm just gonna color his apron. I'm not gonna watercolor it, there's no need to do that here, um, because it's very light, and we don't need to really blend that, but I'm just gonna color it in with this pencil, and make sure you get the, the little straps of his, of his apron. And then last but not least, grab your, let me make sure I get the right one, the light crumb cake. And I'm gonna add just some shadow behind his apron and kind of around just to give him a little more um, dimension. It'll make that kind of pop off a little bit more. And uh, anywhere you see those little, um, you know, those little doodle marks, you can add some shading. Underneath his, the brim of his hat, maybe down one side of his neck, over here underneath his pie. And there we go. So cute, I love him. All right, now we're gonna fussy cut. And if you hate to fussy cut, then just punch him out with a circle, you guys. No need, if fussy cutting is difficult for you or you just despise it, 
then just uh, change it. Do something different. Punch a circle or an oval around him. Um, if you have not seen me fussy cut before, I always share some tips. Use your smallest pair of scissors. These are called paper snips and they are from Stampin' Up. They're a great add-on to your next order. They are really good, they're sharp. Uh, if you use big scissors, you're going to have a hard time getting in all the little nooks and crannies of him. Okay, so use a small, very sharp pair of scissors. I think these are like $9.99 or something. They're great for cutting hair too, I always should say that. <laughs> um, and then notice that I am turning with my hand. I'm not, or turning with my left hand. I'm not really turning my scissors. I'm just kind of rotating that paper in and around on my scissors. Um, and then last but not least, say on the outside of that black line, create just a tiny little bit of a, a cloud is what I used to tell my kindergartners, leave a cloud around your image um, because truly your eye will be tricked into only seeing the black line and not any uh, messy cuts that you may have, okay? Now his little, his little turkey feet are a little tricky, but don't worry. This is all about the chocolate. People don't care that your cutting isn't perfect. They care about the treat that's inside and the fact that you made them something. So don't worry too much and don't be too much of a perfectionist, okay? All right, there we go. We've got him, he's done. How cute is he? Very cute. All right, now let's make the, let's cut out the leaf. We're gonna use the gather together dies. I'm gonna use the big open leaf and I need to get my big shot over here. Hi Betty, hi Janet. Could you use this for a holiday playset? Yes, absolutely. Instead of where I'm going to stamp give thanks, you could, st uh, you know, like uh, print out their names on a on a printer, and uh, and do that uh, right there on the flag. Wouldn't that be cute? That would be very cute. All right, I'm missing one of my plates. Where did it go? Let's pull out another one. All right, so pumpkin pie. Oh, it's right there in front of me. Of course, of course it is. So now I'm gonna emboss this with the hammered embossing folder. Um, is that the right name? Hammered, hammered metal. It, it's very pretty. In the catalog, you'll see that they've done it on foil. It's very pretty. Thanks, Mary. Lots of practice, lots of practice. This is a 3D embossing folder, so you need the new platform or the new plate, the purple plate for the new 3D embossing folders. And just put it on your regular platform. And let's see how it looks. Really neat texture. Really, really neat texture. I like it. Almost um like a you know, like an animal. My husband has boots like that where the leather is you know, alligator or something. I don't know, it's nice. All right, so we've got that, we've got that. Let's do our stamp. We're gonna do give thanks, but like Mary said, we could put someone's name. I need to clean this stamp because before I couldn't find my pumpkin pie and it did it in soft suede. Um, so you could, you know, print out all the names on your printer and then cut them apart with your paper trimmer and then just do it the same exact way. All the measurements for this, you guys, are on the PDF, don't forget, over at pinkbuckaroo.com. So you'll know what exactly what all of these are. Um, so that was the Taylor Tag Punch that I just used there to make that um, banner. Oh, Susan, I'm so sorry about the fires. Oh, be safe. I know that is just terrifying. Just, just terrifying. I know you guys have to deal with that all the time over there. All right, layering these up with dimensionals. All right, lots of dimensionals. There we go. And we are ready to make the box. And then we'll just slap that down on the box and we'll be done. All right, let's see. Where did I put my Simply Scored? You're going to need a piece of early espresso. Let me look at my own PDF so I can tell you exactly 
what it needs to be right here. This is four and a half. Boy, could I have made that font any smaller? <laughs> uh oh. Four and a half by eight and a half early espresso. Let's do the short side first. Short side at one and a fourth and three and a fourth. And then turn it and score the long side at three and five eighths. And five eighths, in case you don't know, is that one tick mark past half, okay? So three and five eighths and then four and seven eighths, which is that one tick mark right before five. Now, before you are, are done with scoring, you've got to add a couple more score lines in here, stopping at that horizontal line. We're going to do one at two and a fourth and stop, and then six and an eighth and stop. Then turn it back to the other side and do it again, two and a fourth and six and an eighth. Okay, now you're done. All right. Now I'm going to get my larger scissors and we are going to cut out the four corner corners. Snowy Wisconsin. Oh, Jan. How nice. It sounds nice. I know y'all are probably like, oh, here we go again. That's how we feel in the beginning of June. Here we go again. All right, so notice what I'm doing. I'm cutting all the way down to that second score line, but cutting off right there. So we are, we're gonna have these little square tabs, okay? All the way down. Okay, so here is what your piece looks like, and we're gonna punch these. Now, you guys are gonna laugh today at me because my punch is broken, uh, and it is totally my fault. I just need to replace it, but it's the detail, the delightful tag topper punch. And normally you stick your paper in like this. See the back goes right there. And then you push down nicely like this. But mine, I've done something to it. So I have to go like this <laughs> to get it to punch. I don't know why, but I don't know. It's kind of, kind of fun. But <laughs> if you had to make a hundred of them, um, it wouldn't be as fun, but don't don't be uh, put off by my punch. It's my problem my fault. They don't come like that Okay, so fold all of these in and Let's put adhesive on the outside of each of the four squares All right, so of course I've got fast fuse which we don't have anymore so if you don't have fast fuse use tear and tape or Tombow, and we're gonna fold these in like this and adhere. Snail adhesive, you're just your regular snail tape adhesive is not strong enough and it will fall apart. Okay, see how those folded in like that? Easy peasy, and we're gonna tie it together like that. Let's put some more of these little pumpkins in um, because I think it's easier to tie a bow when you've got some weight in there. Now, the Mango Melody seam binding. We're gonna put this through both holes. I love seam binding because it's very light and airy. Um, it's easy, it's already wrinkly, so you don't have to worry about your bow looking perfect because it's not going to look perfect. It's not supposed to. It's very forgiving. Cut those off at an angle and decide which side looks the best and <laughs> adhere did I, I didn't mention that this is the Magnolia Lane Designer Series paper. Did you guys see that? That DSP, it's not even a holiday paper. It's from the annual catalog. It's the uh, Magnolia paper. And right there and ta-da, we are done. If you needed to make a bunch of these, it really isn't gonna take you very long. Um, I would, you know, do all the turkeys at once, do all the leaves at once and kind of, um, you know, make a, a production line, a mass production line to make them. All right, there you go, project number one. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Very cute. I was thinking of what other things could fit in here, and um, you know, I saw pumpkin pie Rice Krispie treats on Amazon, um, and I haven't seen them in the store. I haven't ordered them because I don't wanna make a treat from something that's gonna be hard for us to find, you know, but pumpkin pie rice crispy treats sound like a lot of fun. So I was thinking maybe they would fit in there. What do you think? Pumpkin pie rice crispy treat. 
Okay, project number two is a Halloween, the Halloween duck. And he is probably my favorite. I don't know, I really like that turkey too. Um, and you'll notice that I didn't color him yellow. Every sample I've seen online using him colored him yellow and I felt like you kind of get too many colors um, when you're doing that. So I decided to leave him white. Um, we'll add a little bit of shadowing uh, to him, but it also simplifies your coloring so that you, um, if you're making a bunch of them, it won't take you terribly long. And you notice that it's a treasure chest. He's a pirate. So it's a treasure chest. Aha, uh -huh, see how I did that? Very fun. Now what's inside, guess what? Skulls and Bones Sweet Tarts. Perfect, right? Just like that, they fit perfectly inside our pillow boxes. These are our pillow boxes. They come like this. They're already ready for you and they make making a bunch of treats quick and easy, okay? Now, we're gonna do something to this and I wanna show you the difference. Where is the other, what did I do with them? So this is the, here's the first one that I made. And I, we're gonna use the sponge roller, sponge brayer to make it more brown. Um, and so this is the first one I made. And then I went to make the second one and my ink pad was kind of dry, so I re-inked it. <laughs> and can you see the difference? Same, both are made with soft suede. So depending on how juicy or not juicy your ink pad is, will determine the how dark or not dark your pillow box is. Okay, so get your um, sponge brayer and some soft suede ink. Make sure you're protecting your surface below you with some grid paper, scratch paper. And we're just gonna start, I can already tell this is less juicy than this morning. And we're just gonna roll it, roll it, roll it. Make sure when you're rolling on your, um, your ink pad that you're kind of rolling in different directions. That way your whole, the whole roller will be inked evenly. Okay. And we're just going to continue getting it nice and dark brown like a pirate's treasure chest. All right, and then of course you wanna do the other side. I love this set too, Jan, it is really fun. The large flaming scissors, Mary, those I've had those for many years, they're Fiskars. I mean, I've probably had those for 10 years and I think that they probably came from the craft store or Walmart or wherever they sell Fisker scissors. I may have even, I may have even had those when I was teaching school. I don't know, I, I feel like maybe they, I love those scissors, they're good. Okay, now, once you have done that, you're gonna need to give your pillow box some time to dry because it is kind of wet with that ink. Um, to get the next pieces to stick to it. So I have one that I made this morning and I believe that it will be dry enough for us to go ahead and adhere these next pieces. Let me get everything out of my basket. Okay, so I've cut two half inch strips um, of gold from gold foil. And we're going to, one thing I wanna do is fold in these little, so I can see where the edge is so that the um, little gold straps on the treasure chest will be equidistant. Okay, so let's look. We'll put one right here like that. And then, now I'm not measuring it, but you know, we wanna eyeball it about like that. Okay, then you can, Open it back up and just trim those off. But remember, give your treasure chest some time to dry because these, the first time I made it, they would not stick because the ink was still pretty wet. And then we've got some three quarter inch squares of gold foil down here for the little buckle on the gold strap like that. And then in the center of the little buckle, we're gonna put a half inch soft suede square. Oh, that feels like a tongue twister, soft suede square. There we go. Okay, now 
let's put our skulls and bones. I um, got, did I mention I got these on Amazon? Um, so I did link today on um, today's post so you can find them. And when you're folding these up, this little, the one that has a little notch goes inside because that helps your finger to open it, okay? So if you're wondering, that one goes inside. All right, so I probably put that on the back side. I probably should have put them on that side, but that's okay because we're gonna take some ribbon and we'll tie it. Um, and you could put those gold straps on both sides if you wanna be extra fancy. I think these would be fun to hand out at to trick-or-treaters, uh, maybe a trunk or treat. If you're doing a trunk or treat, you could do a whole pirate theme. Um, decorate your car like a pirate. Dress up like a pirate and then hand these out to all the little kids that come. So fun. Okay, so we've got that. Now we need to make, that's really bothering me. Oh well. Oh well, it'll just have to do. <laughs> okay, now, um, I have punched a circle. What size is this circle? It is two and a fourth inch and it is thick whisper white. I like to uh, color on thick whisper white. I'm gonna ink him in Memento, again, because we're using Stampin' Blends and you wanna use a water-based ink when you're using your alcohol markers. Now his little pieces are small. See how tiny his little bandana is and his tiny little pumpkin. So you're gonna have to really take your time and go slow um, when you're coloring these tiny little things. And I like to just kind of dot my marker on these small, um, you know, these small elements, just kind of dot it like that. So pumpkin pie, and then we'll take real red. And the, not only is the bandana tiny, but it has polka dots on it that I want to leave white. So I'm really just dotting the color around there. All right, for his beak and his feet, we'll use Mango Melody again. I like Mango Melody. It's a great color in between yellow and orange. I use it a lot. Okay, now let's do his pirate hat. We're gonna do it. I'm not gonna use black for that. I don't trust myself with that dark black in such a big area. So we'll just use dark smoky slate, which will just be, will be fine too. Go around that little skull and crossbones. There we go. And then we're gonna do his vest. And we're gonna do his vest in soft suede. Um, I'm gonna start with light soft suede. And I'm gonna color it all in light. Using that bullet tip. And I'm gonna leave that open and come over to my dark and add some dark behind his little wing and kind of down and around. And then just take that light and spread that color up so it'll blend into um, the light up at the top. And then we'll do the same over here on this side. Like that. There we go. I'm just thinking my daughter, she's a safety patrol after school today. I can't remember what she took to school. I hope she she did take a sweatshirt, I believe. You know, yesterday she was wearing shorts and a tank top to school. Today it's so cold. All right, let's get um, light smoky slate. And let's just add, instead of coloring him in, I'm just gonna add some shadow underneath the vest. It's gonna give it a little bit more of that dimension down here, kind of on the bottom. Um, let's see, maybe underneath very carefully, under his bandana and around there. Oh, and as my mother always told me, don't let it, don't let them just float around. Give them gra a ground line. So use your smoky slate to just draw a little shadow, so he's not floating around in space. Okay, there we go. He's pretty easy to color, I think. And did I lose the pumpkin pie stamp pad again? Ink pad. Where did it go? Here it is. 
we're going to stamp the um, trick or treat sentiment that is from the same birds of a feather stamp set and we're going to cut it I'm going to cut it down like that I just want it just the size of the words okay there we go and it's easier to stamp when the paper is bigger and then cut it down all right let's get a glue dot no let's get a dimensional let's get a mini dimensional and put that right there trick or treat now we could this i use these little clothes pens i really like these these are from walmart you can get them in the craft section um but this last week i ordered a bunch of our gold library clips that are on Cla the clarence rack these are one of my favorite clips and um, that bow needs to be a little bit higher. And so we're gonna use that on this one. And we're gonna clip him on, but then, wait, there's more. We can't have skull and crossbone stickers and not use them, right, with a pirate duck. So I'm just gonna put that right there. I don't know how well that's gonna stick on the clip. Let's see, yeah, there we go. And there you have it. These are the Monster Bash enamel shapes. And as you can see, I have used almost all of them. I gotta find a way to use these, these little tombstones. Hmm, I just had an idea. I don't know if Anne Marie's watching, but we were just talking about something before I went live, and that may be what I need to use it for. Okay, you guys, what do you think? Project number two, a treasure chest pillow box. Those pillow boxes, let's see, how much are they? Did I put them? Yes, $5, is that right? That sounds like that's super cheap. Somebody correct me, I know somebody will know. $5, wow. Um, but you get maybe, I should know these things, eight or 10 in the package. So you could really, you know, especially for a trunk or treat, I just think that would be so fun. All right, uh, Anne-Marie, there you are. Maybe, right? Maybe a little tombstone or something? I don't know. All right, project number three, we are moving on to Christmas. Now let me get a little drink because I'm super thirsty. Hold on. Okay. Project number three, we're going to use the Christmas bird. Last but not least, we've used them all now. And we've got to use the Christmas bird. Let me get all of the Halloween stuff out of the way. I really like these stamp sets that give you the opportunity to use them for more than one season. So the one we used last week, the For Every Season was like that. And now this again too, um, the stamp set is giving us opportunities for the next four holidays, right? Let's see, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Valentine's and yes can you tell I'm a stamper look at my fingers <laughs> this project is a case of a, a cute little project I got from Gwen Duckworth in Michigan she gave me this was one of her 3d swaps and she gave it to me and I absolutely loved it this little guy has a paper clip and he is just clipped on like that to hold this closed and I called it a candy wallet because when you open it there's just a little uh, York peppermint patty in there and I loved it and I told her I was going to case it so I don't know if she watches ever but thank you for a wonderful idea I changed it a tad but not too much because the original design was fantastic all right we're going to start with one of my most favorite colors coastal cabana and let's look at our PDF to see what we need to do. The little Christmas bird is so stinking cute, Janet. I agree. And Anne-Marie, yep, I agree. $5 for 10 pillow boxes, page 172. Thank you, Lisa. I knew somebody would get it for me. $5. Wow. They're 50 cents each. That's awesome. Okay, piece of Coastal Cabana that is eight and a fourth by four. You're going to just score on the long side. You're going to do two and a half, five and three fourths six and six and a fourth okay so those three are just a quarter inch apart it's going to make a little like a um, an accordion on the bottom so we're going to fold these we're going to fold one forward the next one backwards and the third one forwards okay so you've made like a a w okay and that's going to make that little pocket in on the inside and I'm going to take my two inch circle punch and cut out 
a circle right there, half of a circle right there. That way you can get your candy out easily. While we're on the inside, let's go ahead and put that designer series paper. Look at all of these shapes that we need. I have them all clipped together. Lots of circles. Where did my adhesive go? Here it is. This is the Let It Snow designer series paper that we just did our fundraiser class for. And I'm using the non-sparkly side. I'm gonna put that on the inside. Now let's flip it over, let's look at it. Actually, let's go ahead and staple this. I decided to staple it because a staple will hold that fat candy without popping open, um, no problem. So just two little staples right there. Look, see, this is why I don't like painting my fingernails. See what that did? Do you guys have that problem when you paint your fingernails? It leaves those marks. Urgh. Okay, now here's the front side. I need a little bit of a scratch paper behind it. I pulled in the So Many Stars stamp set. Um, I did? Who said that? Tammy. Tammy says, you actually made these on your early blogging days, like 2010, 2011. Tammy is like my um, time capsule. She lets me know of important events. Tammy, you've got like a steel trap brain because I have no memory of that. That's so funny. Wow, who knew? I'll have to go back and look. Well, it's a cute project. See, you know, it's old as new again. All right, so Coastal Cabana, these little stars, and I'm just going to stamp them. Tammy had emailed me too, right, Tammy, when it was my 10-year blog anniversary. I didn't even know and she let me know. She's so good. Tammy is my local downline here, slash friend, slash parent at school. I don't think I actually had your kids, Tammy, but I'm, that's how I met her. She was a parent. She was a mom at the school that I taught at. Okay, so Coastal Cabana Stars. Now let's pull in this piece right here. Let's get rid of that stamped paper. This is the Be Mine Stitched Scallop border from the Be Mine um, dies, you know, the stitched hearts. I use this about every other day. <laughs> this border, it's my favorite. Hi, Nadine, it's nice to see you. All right, snip this off. Thanks for joining, glad you got to join us today. And there we go, isn't that fun? I love that. I wish we had more stitched borders. Stamping up, if you're listening, we need more stitched borders, okay? All right, let's do this sentiment. Real red. This little strip of whisper white. Did I not put those? Oh, hmm, I didn't add those measurements. Or maybe they got cut off. I need to go change the, the size of the font on that. I think this is like one inch, maybe seven eighths. Hmm, that's pretty crooked. Let's try again. That's why your paper has two sides. So if you mess up the first one, you can go right to the back side. All right, now, without smearing our red ink, hopefully, let's get that tailored tag punch and punch a banner end. And let's put this right here. Whoa, there we go, like that. All right, now, we have our little thing made. Let's do the little bird clip, okay? Now we've got a bunch of circles here. We've got one and a half inches, we've got two inches, and we've got two and a fourth. Um, we're gonna start with that two inch whisper white circle, and we're gonna stamp, did I put my memento black over here? I did. Again with a memento black, because we're using Stampin' Blends. I like that. Hi, Paula. Why did I stop teaching? Susan, that's a great question. Um, with several answers. Number one, um, I wanted to do this full time. I loved stamping. Um, I loved paper crafting. And I um, kind of was at my limit. I couldn't do any more than I was doing. And, um, you know, stamp, do more stamping events, do more, um, spend time with my kids, my husband, teaching, all of that. So I really wanted to stop teaching, um, too, because I was burnt out. Uh, teaching is not easy these days, and I was really, really burnt out. I didn't love it anymore. There were a lot of reasons why, um, you know, if you know a teacher, you know, it's just, it's hard these days. 
And um, my husband said he could see how unhappy I was. And he said, let's do it. Let's go for it. And uh, I quit. And I've been doing this for, this is the sixth school year that I've been doing this. And I don't think I'll ever have to go back. Thank God for stamping up is all I have to say. <laughs> okay, so I did a little light coating of um, light pool party. We don't have Coastal Cabana Stampin' Blends, but pool party works as just as well with your Coastal Cabana. I don't miss teaching. I, I do miss um, being with other adults during the day, you know. Um, I love being at home by myself too, but you do miss that camaraderie you have with the other teachers. I, I miss that part of it. And I miss just meeting new people and families. And, you know, um, there were some wonderful families that I taught and I still friends with and love and, you know, miss. But I definitely am a better mom now because I'm not as exa exhausted emotionally <laughs> and mentally and physically. Um, so it was good. It's been a, it's been a good blessing, a big blessing for our family. All right. So I used light and dark. I went dark around the edges, um, blended it all back in with a light. I'm going to take my daffodil to light and do the star and the beak and then get that real red back out and do the top of his cute little Santa hat. There we go. I could see the comments flashing by, but I know that if I look, I'm gonna get distracted. Did I use stamps and punches for projects at school? The punches, Tracy, I did. I And uh, the big shot some too, but not too much with the stamps. With the kids, no. Um, punches, yes, but I would make cute projects, um, you know, for school, um, but not in the classroom, the stamps. Um, stamping with kindergartners and first graders is hard. <laughs> and they don't really do it like I tell them to do it. <laughs> so um, it was a little hard, but they loved punches. They really like to do the punches. Okay, I put Wink of Stella on there. We're gonna add a little bit of snow. We haven't used the Snowfall Accents puff paint yet on a Facebook Live, and I wanna show it to you. It comes out like milk almost. It's very liquidy. And you need to just give yourself a little bit. Um, make sure your paper is flat. And I think I'll put this right here to hold it down. You need to um, get your heat tool and very carefully until it starts to get a little bit thicker. You don't want it to run. And you hold your heat tool on there. And I'm gonna pick it up and put it closer so you guys can see it. As soon as it's, as soon as it's, starts to solidify and you'll see it's almost like a it every time I do it it reminds me of those crystals that we got as kids the grow a crystal kit I don't know I don't even think I had one but I remember watching it on TV or whatever and it, it just puffs right up and the more heat you add the more it'll puff up the only problem with that is you have to be very careful not to scorch your fingers or your paper and then you can add more and do layers. Can you guys see that? It's so cute and fun. And it's, you know, it's dry. It's puffy and it's dry. Okay, so there's that. Let's put him on a scallop circle. Yeah, Vicki, I do too. I love the puff paint. It's magical and I wanna use it a lot. I really, really like it. All right, now for the paper clip on the back, we're gonna take this uh, one and a half inch circle and we're going to adhere it. We're gonna put adhesive here and then adhere it down and that's gonna hold that paper clip on there. Um, that's what Gwen did on hers and I thought that that was really smart. I don't think I would have thought of that um, to attach that paper clip. Well, I just pulled it out. Um, use tear and tape or even your Tombow on this. Um, because you need it to be, to hold it really well. All right, so I put it on either side, and now <laughs> make sure that you don't put it sideways, because that's what I did earlier. You don't want it, your bird to be sideways or upside down, so make sure that you put your paper clip facing the way that you're gonna clip it on with your bird, okay? So then you just slide it like that and it holds that closed. Um, let's add a bow, of course. I 
Whisper White Baker's Twine Bow. And I actually did a double bow using two strands. Just fold your, your Baker's Twine in half and um, use it like you're, you have one piece and that will make a double bow. All right, now we've got to do the candy on the inside. So we've got some more circles here. I pulled this little, this is like a little scattering of snow and stars from that star stamp set that we used earlier. And I'm gonna do that in Coastal Cabana. And then I'm going to do the sentiment, enjoy the season, again from um, the bird stamp set in real red birds of a feather is what it's called <laughs> I couldn't remember all of a sudden so a one and a half inch whisper white on a two inch real red on a two and a fourth inch coastal cabana and then get your york peppermint patty and a dimensional and you just stick that right there does the puff paint smush in the mail linda i don't know i bet it would smush a little bit but it's not going to completely flatten um because it's you know it's pretty puffy and then we'll just slide those in there but yeah i mean you never know what's going to happen in the mail <laughs> you know um it might smush a little bit but it's not too terribly thick um so i bet it wouldn't smush too much okay you guys what do you think so fun, right? Super cute. Thank you to Gwen who gave me uh, one of her swaps um, because I, I just love that idea. It's very cute. Okay, we are done stamping. Let's look at what we did today. We did the turkeys. We did the ducks. We did the little Christmas birds. And we did on yesterday or Wednesday, the Valentine's, um, I don't know what in the world I did with it. Let me think. Hmm, the Valentine treat box. I have so many piles of things right now in here, but who knows? Well, I have no idea where that adorable little treat box went, but go back and look at yesterday's post and you'll see the fourth project, the Valentine's project. All right, you guys, make sure you hop back over to my blog um, to get the PDF for all three of these projects and the links for those classes that we talked about are there. Host code is here. Make sure your orders, if you want these three, make and takes for free in the mail next week. Make sure you have an order um, by Monday at midnight and there's the host code. Okay, you guys been fun today. You've been great. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next week. Next week, we're probably going to do our last set of Halloween projects. I think we're going to do the, the monsters, the boo to you. Okay, um, so stay tuned for next week. And then uh, after that, we're going to move on from Halloween, I think. I think it'll be time for us to move on. You guys have a great weekend. Stay warm, guys. Bye.